and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UA TV. Russian authorities continue to harass Crimean residents conducting politically motivated researches. Recently, the Russian Ministry of Justice has called for Crimean human rights lawyer Emil Kurbidinov to be expelled from de facto Crimea Central Bar Association before March 2019. This may lead to disbarment that could deprive Emil of the possibility to practice law. To talk more about this and other human rights violations in the occupied Crimea, we're joined in the studio today by Sergei Zayets. He's a lawyer, expert of the Regional Center for Human Rights. Hello and thank you for joining. Thank you. Hello. So let's uh, let our audience first of all know who Emil Kurbidinov is. Uh, Emil Kurbidinov is a, a Crimean Tatar lawyer, a human rights defender who um, work in a lot of uh, uh, political uh, cases regarding uh, pro-Ukrainian uh, uh, population of Crimea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes and sometimes it's uh, uh, Ukrainian sailors arrested in the end of November last year. So currently he's also uh, taking participation, taking part in the case of the 24 Ukrainian sailors that were uh, captured in the Kurt Strait last November. Mm -hmm. uh, he also, while working on this case, he also uh, made a point that he will never voluntarily stop practicing law. Now, what, what does this message uh, what does this message mean, not only for Crimean Tatar people, but for the whole nation of Ukraine? Uh, that uh, means that uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, Crimean uh, activists who uh, still uh, struggle for, um, let's say, uh, human rights, uh, for, for, for protection of human rights in the occupied territory of uh, uh, Crimea and uh, uh, that I would say that uh, this means that uh, uh, at least we have a hope for uh, returning of the Crimean Pen Peninsula uh, to the uh, control of the Ukrainian government. Uh, for the people who know uh, the true story of what is actually happening uh, on Crimean Peninsula right now, on the occupied territory, uh, they are well aware of the fact that uh, tons of human rights violations are happening uh, on the occupied territory of Crimea, and that de facto Russian authorities are pressuring on Crimean Tatar people, and uh, not only people, not only uh, regular residents, but also uh, to the people of law, like Emil Korbedina, like lawyers, they're pressuring them, um, uh, applying pressure to them um, with one aim, with one aim to make them quit what they're doing, to make them quit fighting for justice for Crimean Tatar people. What can Ukrainian government do in this situation to protect the Crimean Tatar people and those Crimean Tatars in particular who are trying to fight for justice for the whole nation? Uh, you know, it's difficult to say uh, what Ukrainian uh, government can do in, in this situation because uh, it's um, this territory is not under control of the Ukrainian government. So there is temporary. A, uh, temporary, but there is a few opportunities uh, that available for the Ukrainian government. But mm -hmm. uh, I would uh, like to uh, highlight that it's very important to uh, continue to work in uh, cases uh, regarding human rights violations. Because uh, uh, the government of Russian Federation banned uh, visits of foreign human rights uh, defenders. Uh, is that actually legal? Yes, it's, it, it, it's legal, but this is the only channel where, uh, th through which we can uh, understand what is really happening in Crimea. 
outside mm -hmm. of the picture that the Russian Federation uh, tried to uh, translate to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Because Russian Federation uh, uh, says, says that uh, it's okay in Crimea. There is no human rights violation. Uh, people uh, are glad that they are now uh, under the uh, Russian legislation and everything is okay. And if yet it's not okay and there, and there are proofs of that. And let me tell you this, on um, uh, the 11th of January, security officials entered the homes of at least two Crimean Tatars looking for what they call prohibited literature. Among the uh, searched homes were those of a dental technician, Server Baryev, and a builder, Ernest Aliyev. And although nothing was seized and no one was arrested, the residents were interrogated. Let's listen to those people that were interrogated now. They immediately presented a warrant from a court decision to conduct a search, as if members of Hizbub Tahrir gather in my house and discuss issues and disagreements they have with the authorities. They tried to ask me what ideology I adhere to. I refused to answer. I didn't sign anything. So, this is a perfectly clear picture that it's not okay in Crimea and people are not happy uh, uh, to be under the control of uh, the Russian authorities and that people living in Crimea, especially Crimean Tatars, are being persecuted. And not only the Ukrainian government is aware of this, European authorities are also aware of this. Why is Russia not reacting? You know, uh uh, things that the Russian government uh, uh, do in the occupied territory is, are, are very similar to what the Nazis Germany uh, did during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So they uh, is this basically a dictatorship? Uh, yes, and mm -hmm. they don't afraid uh, anything in the world. They say that we are a strong nation, they say uh, Crimea is uh, Russian and uh, it's um, all, all we do in the territory of Crimea is good for pro-Russian people. So we protect Russian citizens, uh, citizens from uh, threat of uh, extremism, from terrorism and uh, this is why and how Russian Federation explains what happened. Mm -hmm. And they uh, don't react to uh, any uh, attempts to uh, influence to uh, this situation from the foreign countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's important to uh, bring these cases to international um, judicial bodies like uh, the European uh, Court uh, of Human Rights, for mm -hmm. example. Because all we have at this moment, or not at this moment, but all we have when we uh, look uh, TV, uh, we see just um, declarations that need to be um, persuaded. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary to, to submit uh, cases to the European Court of Human Rights, to the United Nations Human Rights Committee, when the Russian government uh, have uh, an opportunity to uh, explain the situation. And after that, we have a judicial um, decision or judgment that uh, uh, is real fact. Not what uh, a, a, a person said from the TV screen. Mm -hmm. It's what is uh, proved uh, before the international judicial body. Filing complaints or appeals to the European courts or international courts, this is a job for Ukrainian government, am I right? Uh, not only Ukrainian government. This is uh, the job for Ukrainian human rights activists. Mm -hmm. This is the job part of this job uh, should be done by uh, lawyers in the occupied territory, mm -hmm. maybe even in the territory of the Russian Federation when we uh, talk about uh, Ukrainian uh, sailors and so on. It's a, a lot of work that 
should be done, um, I would say, in the field, mm -hmm. at the national level. And after that, it's possible to uh, submit this case uh, to the European Court or to uh, another uh, international uh, body. Mm -hmm. um, there is quite a number of political prisoners currently held behind bars in Russia, not only in the occupied Crimea, but all over the Russian territory. Some of them are in bad, uh, they have a health condition, are in bad conditions uh, concerning their health. I wouldn't want to say this, but I have to ask, what happens if one of them dies? Uh, you mean legal consequences? Of course. Uh, you know, um, it's uh, the basis for uh, uh, the responsibility of the Russian Federation for such deaths. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, it's, I would say, it's, it's impossible to change this situation. But it's possible to prevent, uh, prevent uh, repetition of, of that uh, su such uh, situation in future. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if to compare uh, Russian Federation with the uh, Nazis Germany, in uh, 1941, they believed that uh, they will uh, rule all the world. In uh, the end of 1990s, they paid for, for even for uh, work that was done for Nazis Germany by uh, Ukrainian mm -hmm. people that were transferred to the territory of Germany. So its uh, situation uh, is uh, changes and we, we need to um, work for uh, for future, I would say. Let's work for the future together for the prosperity of Ukraine. And let's work for Crimea being back. Thank you so much for coming. That was Sergei Zayas. He's a lawyer and an expert of the Regional Center for Human Rights. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more with TV.